Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. We're back on the Ansible series and this one is probably a bit of a deeper dive into the topics that we covered in the last video. So as a quick refresher, we looked at an update playbook. So this would update a machine and it would use the hosts file. In this video, we're moving away from the hosts file to a user specified inventory file. The syntax is a little bit different and it's a bit more powerful because it means we can prescriptively select which inventory file we want, which is really useful if you're doing things, say cloning it from a Git repo. Also in this video, I'm gonna show you how to update that playbook so that it will target multiple operating systems at once and those operating systems don't have to be the same and you can have different credentials, etc. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to update an Arch OS. Yes, I'm a masochist and I've started using Arch. I can do a video on that as well if you're interested in learning more about Arch. I definitely recommend that you go and check it out. It's basically Linux without the brakes on. You have to do everything yourself. Also in this video, I'll be showing you more about the power of the when clause, which is something we'll continue to build upon as we move closer and closer to being able to deploy things like Kubernetes in code and also hopefully getting our whole infrastructure, including Kubernetes, deployed as code. Well, let's jump into VS Code. Let's get started. So I've made myself smaller and I've also enabled Ansible Lint, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner. This enables us to look at the code and it also is really helpful for debugging, especially as Ansible tends to change the syntax quite frequently. So what are we looking at here? Well, as I mentioned a minute ago, it's the inventory file. Previously, we were on here in the hosts file, just on this one here, but we're now looking at an inventory file. So in this inventory file, I've got three hosts. I've got Arch, Docker, and Windows. Docker is actually just Ubuntu. Now, this could be, as I've said before, anything that you want. Also, you could have things like Arch02 just down here, and you'd put in different IP addresses, users, different interpreters if you needed to. Or you could have more than one Docker host. Certainly when we get onto things like Kubernetes, we'll obviously have masters and agents, etc. And we'll have those in different groupings. Now I'm going to show you this update book. Now the reason I'm going to show you that is twofold, mainly to show off different OSs and advanced use cases for the when command, plus a whole load more of the checks that you will need to do updates on various OSs. Now, conversely, I don't actually recommend this is the best way to do updates on machines. That's because I think you should actually use what you're looking at here, the inventory, to target specific groups of hosts, which it makes sense, right? Anything going in the Arch group would be an Arch OS, so you don't have to do the checks. In the playbook I'm going to show in a minute, we actually do things based upon determining what the host is. So if ever you were in a position whereby you had a load of IPs and you wanted to update them, you didn't know what they were, this script should go through, find out what the OS is, and then based upon what OS it discovers, it should run the relevant update process. So I've just called this playbook OS-Update. You can choose whatever you want. As you can see in the bottom, it's automatically detected this as Ansible. If it doesn't, click on that and then select it here. For this to work, you're gonna need to install Ansible Lint on this machine. So this is my Ansible VM. And do bear in mind that for connecting to things like the Arch OS, etc., you're gonna need to have Python installed on that remote machine. Otherwise, these will not be able to execute. One other thing to note as we're going through here is I've tried to stick to what are called FQCNs and you'll see an example here, ansible.builtin.setup. That's because these are unique names that Ansible understands. They're basically part of the core Ansible and it means that you don't get conflicts with user generated names. So let's have a quick look through here at a high level and then we'll scratch the surface. So this updates Windows, Arch Linux and Ubuntu. It targets all hosts. Like I say, I don't necessarily think this is the best way to actually update multiple hosts. This is more just I wanted to show some advanced tasks using when clauses. What I recommend you do is go back to your inventory file and 
basically run the right playbook in here so update windows you would you would obviously then target it specifically to these windows hosts so you don't actually need to do the check i'm showing today it's just a way to show you how to build advanced checks and use when clauses so we're going to update windows we're going to check if it needs a reboot and do it if it does that's the same as last video but a bit more advanced we're then going to do the same for Arch and we're also going to do the same for Ubuntu, which we saw in the last video. So for Windows, how do we do this? Well, as I said, we're tackling all hosts. We're going to gather the facts and that's using the Ansible built-in setup. The handy thing is if you've got now Ansible Lint installed for VS Code, you can actually see a load more information in here as you're going. And it also has some really handy autocomplete. So for example, if you wanted to do say Ansible dot you can see it's automatically going to start suggesting things which you can then put in and you can hover over it and it will tell you what they all mean so the first thing we're going to do is run this task called update windows and the crucial thing here is that when clause so it's going to gather the facts first and then it's going to say if the os family equals windows go ahead and call the fqcn ansible windows win updates that's pretty straightforward then it's going to do the updates for security, rolling updates, and critical updates. It's then going to set the state to be installed, and then it will set the register to a win update and result, which we're going to query in the next step. Now, I'm not going to go through details of how to set up Windows to do this. You need to use the Windows Remote Manager, but I will link a video now that will describe that for you. Next, if we have a look, we can see check if Windows requires a reboot. So it's saying that when the win update result has changed and it's required, it will then call the FQCN of Ansible.Windows win reboot. Pretty self-explanatory. It'll wait five minutes and then it will register the win reboot result, i.e. did it fail or did it successfully reboot. That's that. Pretty cool. Next, we're going to update Arch. As I mentioned, make sure you go away and you install Python onto Arch. Arch is pretty tricky, so if you're going off this from my video to going to install Arch um, and trying to get this working, you're going to have a rough time. You need to learn basically how to use Arch first. You'll probably stumble even to install it, but actually their wiki is really good. And like I say, if there's enough people, I can do some videos around Arch. I definitely think if you're trying to learn Linux, it's a good place to start, albeit it's going to be quite intimidating to start with. So again, we call the same when. So Ansible facts, the OS family equals Arch. We're going to now call a community FQCN which is called General and Pac-Man. Well, what's Pac-Man? <laughs> it's not that friendly arcade game from the 70s, 80s? I don't know. Um, no, it's Package Manager. So you'll know from my Ubuntu videos, that's kind of my Linux OS of choice, that that uses apt. Actually here, it uses a separate package manager handily named Pac-Man. So we need to call that name instead. And then we need to do the update a cache and upgrade, which is similar to how we use apt. So we want to pull down the repository first, check that there's differences, and then we want to go and do the actual application upgrades themselves. Once that's done, we register the result. And again, we then check what happens off the back of that. So we check if it requires a reboot, Again, we have some Ansible facts, so we only want to run this, this check, when the OS family equals Arch. That's because the checks can be bespoke for different flavors of Linux. In this case, again, we use the FQCN of built-in stat, and we look for this path on the uh, remote machine, on that Arch machine. And if it does, we say that, yep, we need a reboot. Then we get onto the next bit, which actually says, well, if that exists, go and do the reboot. So a bit similar to how we did Ubuntu and what I'll show you in a moment. If we look at Ubuntu, basically the same thing. We call the Ansible facts, we look at the OS family, and in this case it's going to be Debian because Ubuntu is Debian based. We use the Ansible built-in APT, not the Pac-Man, which we saw from Arch just a moment ago. We call upgrade distro and upgrade the cache. So that's going to go away, pull the repos and then update anything that's needed. We then check if a reboot is required on Ubuntu. 
and we do that very similarly by checking var run reboot required. You'll notice I went through that in my previous video. Then we register the action from that and then we check that. So we say does this stat exist? If it does we go away and we reboot that machine. So once you've got all of that set up and you've got an OS to query, so on my instance I've spun up an Arch OS, I'll show you that now. Here you can see that I've got an Arch operating system up and running. Now I've made this really simple for this video. I've been a bit naughty, I've enabled root SSH access to this machine just so I can make the playbook simpler. I've also had to copy over my SSH key from my Ansible machine onto this machine and that's using the SSH copy command that we used in the previous video and you'll need to get used to using that for all of your machines. Now once you've set that up and enabled it obviously what I would recommend you do is create a non-root user and go through the standard pseudo method for upgrading privilege, escalation etc. But once you've got that up and running we can head back to VS Code and we can run the following command to use this. But it's a little bit different from the one we used previously. And it's different because firstly we're specifying an inventory file down here with the dash i. So instead of using the default host, which is what it will go back to, we're using the inventory file that we created over here. Now I have changed this inventory file because in this demonstration, I'm just gonna show you connecting to Arch. And all I've done is removed the other two hosts just because I don't have those set up. So with that said, we can now run this command and hopefully it's going to connect to my Arch machine and it's going to see whether anything needs updating. Now let's scroll up to the output and see what happened there. So it ran this command and it ran it against Arch01, which is the only one that I've got in my inventory file here. And what did it say? Well, it skipped Windows skipped all of these tasks that's because it didn't actually match the conditions so remember we had a when clause in there so the os wouldn't have specified that it was windows and it wouldn't have specified that it's debian because it's arch also if we have a look down here it looks as though it didn't actually require any updates that's because i only installed it a day or two ago and Arch is minimalist in its nature, so actually the number of components it needs to update in terms of my installation are very small. So it actually skipped that again, and you can see out of the 10 actions, it skipped 8 of them, but the main thing is it did connect to the operating system, and it did run those playbooks. So if I was to do this against all three of those machines, the Windows, the Ubuntu, and the Arch, we might get different results. So it could go off and update those. So let's go back and test that theory. So now I've added in my Docker host. Now this is actually my Docker host that I use for all of these videos. So now when we run this query, fingers crossed, we find something to update. It's gonna perform some of those actions and potentially do a reboot if required. Let's see. To do this, I'm probably going to need to use the ask become pass. Um, that's because to become a root user or to be elevate my privilege on my Ubuntu machine, I need to put in my password. So when I run this, it's going to say, what is that password? So let me type that in now. Arch said is okay, it's gathering the facts. It's skipping through and I think because it's pausing here on Ubuntu, it's probably found a load of updates that need to happen. So I'll let this run and I'll see you on the other side. And in parallel, you can see here, I've got the output of this Docker machine. This is Docker here. You can see that it's changed something down here. So it did do some updates. And because it did do some updates, it found the file and it's now gone away and rebooted that virtual machine. Perfect. Hopefully when that machine comes back up, it should change that state and then this playbook should complete. 
And now you can probably hear a few pings. That's because my uptime Kuma is saying that things are down because of the reboot. Um, and yes, we're back here. That's now back at the Docker login. And if we look down here, we can see that it changed two things. That's because it found updates and performed them and then it performed that reboot. So there we have two machines diff of different OS architectures being targeted, performing different roles based upon what it finds, i.e. that when clause, and then performing the updates and reporting all of that. And everything looks to have gone ahead successfully. Hopefully I haven't broken my uh, Docker machine. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully you found that useful and that's going to give you a bit more confidence and a bit more knowledge around what Ansible is capable of and give you the ability to go and manage all of your machines, certainly regarding updates centrally. Now on a few of those things, I did use some secrets, i.e. some passwords, and we're going to be using a vault in future videos to fix that. And as a little bit of a sneak peek, I do actually already have RKE2 with Cilium running in Ansible. So for all of you Kubernetes nuts out there, that is coming and I'm really excited to show that. But I'm going to continue putting the building blocks in place first. So thanks for watching. If you like this or you have any feedbacks or improvements, do let me know. But otherwise, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.